Yo, 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 No Maniacs, what's good? Good afternoon. This is Nomad Live, all bears all the time, with in conjunction with Sports Zone Chicago and the Super yeah, yeah. Sean, Greg, Sierra. And uh, we got a lot to talk about today. You know, of course, the thumbnail says, does Magic have one more trick? And he's going to probably need one, I'm assuming, right about now, based on the way things are, are being uh, spit out to the media, you would say, because um, the coach is talking. And so is the GM right about now. And there's a bunch to talk about in regards to some of those statements I heard today. I got a few written down, and we're going to discuss them. And by, before we get all the way into it, thank everybody for being at the show. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of names over there, but I'm going to let uh, Kids do his thing. But before he does, man, make sure everybody know, lets us know where you're tapping in from, especially if you're from overseas. Please make sure uh, you let us know where you're from. Go ahead, kids. What's cracking, No Maniacs? Good to hear from Nomad and where we're headed today. Great to see you guys all living it up in the chat, keeping it active, keeping you know, keeping the chat civil and angry and awesome and happy. All of the above. Um, let's let's continue all that. I'll give some shout outs to the folks who are with us right now. Our guy, number one, No Maniac Plank, number one, female, No Maniac Remy. In the building, just representing with us, um, Jan Hammer, Derek Carter, uh, Jose Sanchez from the PR from Puerto Rico. Oh, oh everybody's oh. sleeping. Everybody's sleeping. It's still early on the show. We'll get there. Um, Evie Beardown Davis, Nathan Campbell. Uh, who else we got? Squeegee, Creighton Wilfong. You know what, Creighton? You've been in and around for the last little while. Thanks for representing and rocking with us. Billy Ocean, when the going gets tough. FFG style, Nathan Campbell. Uh, uh, anyone else? Miguel, Miguel Saavedra. I, I, I'm probably butchering that last name, but it was worth a shot. And our guy, Brian Hendren, on the wheels of steel on the back, keeping things real. Um, Armando Jr. And I, I assume Patty's floating around there somewhere. Where, 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 what's up, Patty? Uh, what's up to all you guys? Brett Coleman as well. King Book of World representing with us. Bishop, what do you got to say, brother? Gonna be a show. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Good afternoon, no maniacs and sports zoners. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Since kids has already addressed everyone in the chat, good afternoon to all of you. But more importantly, we have some ones that aren't able to get into the chat that I like to also acknowledge, which is my boy Stuart and Sophie out in Florida. My boy V Dub out there in, in, in Detroit on that truck right now. Two of my most notable ones that's always paying attention. You know who you are. I'm going to keep you nameless today. But more importantly, to my SIU folks and everybody else out there. And, oh, by the way, a number one fan for the Chicago Bears that I know of. His name is Milt on the west side of Chicago. What's going on? My man, Sean, what's going on today, Papa? Man, let me tell you. Beautiful day. It's terrific tequila and Taco Tuesday today, boy. So taco get some Tuesday. Tacos, get some tacos in with some tequila. That's what I'm get talking the tacos. about. I'm in, for the, I'm in for the sauce. Let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. Me too. Me too. A lot, a lot of things happening down at the at the, the owners meeting down in Orlando with the land of big ears, you know, Mickey and Minnie and all them. And uh, a lot of good stuff coming from his Ryan Poles tipped his, tipped his uh, hand a little bit. Uh, we're going to find out. We're going to talk about that. Ryan Poles, is he not happy about RG3's comments. We're going to talk about that too. Does Magic have one more trick up his sleeve? Woo! We're going to find out. Talk about that too. Let's get it cracking. All right, man. Because uh, you know what, man? The first thing we have to talk about is my least favorite subject right about now because I'm tired of, quite frankly, I'm just tired of hearing about it because they think, I think they really need to make a decision here and, and stick to it. But I know that, uh, I mean, Kevin Warren is, is playing. A game of chess right now. He's playing not 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 even chess right now. It's a game of chicken, and it, he's playing it with Arlington Heights because he's he's now saying he's committed to, you know, getting shovels in the ground right here on the lakefront. And but we talked about this the other day, and you know, my opinion on it is, I don't see it because of the infrastructure problem. I don't see it. You know, he, he's talking about Sean. You know the area a lot better than I do. Um, you know, there's a museum in the area. I can't remember what museum that is. But there's a museum in the area that he's talking about digging. But they sound like they're committing themselves to doing this lakefront uh, uh, job, man. And I just, for the life of me, man, I can't I can't see it, man. I really can't, man. It's just too much going on. It's just 
too many things have to fall in place and come exactly it, you know, into the fold at the right time. And it's just the infrastructure thing for me that I think is uh if it's gonna be any kind of you know setback or anything that, that gets in the way of this whole thing, if they really want to do that, it's gonna be the infrastructure part. It is it I still think it's possible. I know it, it would be it would I'm not saying it's it'd be easy. It would, it would cost some stuff, but it'd be a lot easier. I still think that it, it can still be done. Um, By the way, he, he said he wanted to do it this year, Sean. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, yeah, the Museum of Science and Industry, but there's, you can, you can still access the Museum of Science and Industry without affecting Museum of Science and Industry is a little further North than where they're talking about, uh, about, you know, putting shovels in the dirt. All right. So you, it's still, it's, it's either North of, um, Soldier Field, the museum. So there's uh what's it called? It's not it's not Waldron Drive. It's uh uh I can't think of the of the of the street that you could turn off of Lakeshore Drive and, and get to the uh museum campus. It wouldn't affect that because it's still so much further south. So we'll see. Uh he is playing a game of chicken, all right, and we're gonna find out. Do they really want the Arlington Heights things? He's just using this for leverage. If he is, he's he's going at it hardcore, man. He's going at it hard. Core and he keeps talking about the backdrop of the city. Um, so uh, you know, Chicago was blessed with the beautiful lakefront, the skyline, and to put the uh, the new soldier field or whatever the stadium would be called because it'll probably be sold to the naming rights, whatever it is, would have it would fit perfectly, according to Kevin Warren. Man, he, he's th this is why they brought him in. This is why they brought him in to negotiate and get this thing done. So hopefully, it, it can get done soon. If it's the Arlington Heights thing, man, have them come off the taxes. And if not, and we got to we got to build in in Chicago, bump it. Let's do it. Keith, you are also uh, very familiar with the area, and um, <laughs> I, I just don't, man. I I just keep seeing construction and infrastructure problems like crazy. I think people, uh, I think people really think they want something until they get it. You know, you you. I mean, people that live in and around the area, you know, you can you can just uh, just imagine, you know, what kind of headaches that might be. You know, this is a busy, 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 busy area. And you got to shut all that down to kind of do the stuff that he wants to do. I don't know. I don't see it playing out very well, to be honest with you. But what do you think, Keith? Let me switch hats for a moment here. <clears throat> this is what I honestly think. I understand what he's trying to do. I agree with you with regard to some infrastructure concerns. But more importantly, uh, the citizens of Chicago are already on the hook for millions of dollars with the previous renovation of Soldier Fields that has yet to be paid in full. Now you want to, I understand that the team said that they're going to pay for this stadium. Two billion, but only two billion. Only two billion. So let's be real. Where's the other money coming from? Somebody's going to be on, got to be on the hook for it. So I get it. Bears fans in the city of Chicago and the suburbs, you guys want this in the city? Are you willing to pay that tax dollar for it and still pay for the the other bill on Soldier Fields? What is what I think is he's doing is leveraging uh, leveraging everything against Arlington Heights because essentially this will set the McCaskey family and the Bears organization up for generations to come if they make the Arlington Heights move because now they become landowners. And they can now lease out different buildings as they build this megaplex that's going to bring in more and more revenue to help them be able to pay for free agents and players in years to come if they're thinking business wise. And I think that's the way he's playing it just to continue to keep the keep his his foot on the necks of Arlington Heights to let them know that and make sure that they're definitely on the hook and don't try to renege once things start moving forward. Hey kids, I yeah, but here's what I think is going on. I think they there was a, there was a number as far as the tax breaks went in Arlington Heights, and you know whatever that number was and whatever those figures were, I think he's shaking the tree, and he's trying to get to a certain number for his tax breaks, and I think he's playing hardball right now, and I think yeah. you know you know virtue signaling exactly what they plan on doing right here on the lakefront is a good strong move if, if that's the game that you're playing because if you're looking for a certain number a certain amount 
you know, for how many years you get this tax break. It could be a lot of things going on in the dy dynamics of that negotiation when it comes to a city council and things like that. And so to me, I think that's, the you know, my mind works like that. I'm thinking, OK, he's always playing ahead of the next move. He's, I think he's trying to shake the tree. And I think they're going to end up in Arlington eventually when they get to the right uh, uh, dollar amount or the length of that tax break, if that makes any sense to you. It does. And that's kind of what I think is going on, too. I think this is just some healthy negotiation. Now, I do have one, one question about the whole thing, and that is like, so you're playing hardball here. You've already you've already put down a sizable amount of funds with respect to the lot in Arlington. Um, what happens if they don't go to Arlington? What happens if you actually do move forward with the downtown project as opposed to the Arlington project? How do you get out of that, you know, that investment, or do you, you know, do you decide to build something else downtown Arlington? That isn't necessarily uh, uh, a bear stadium, as a for instance, right? I I'm not sure what they do with that investment. To be honest with you, I think it might be in their best interest to keep the to keep the land, you know, build a casino out there, build some kind of stuff out there, um, and still get that kind of green from from that um, real estate development out in Arlington Heights. But keep the stadium downtown Chicago, like realistically, everybody wants. Um, everybody except for the, you know, the taxpayers in Arlington Heights, I suppose is really the best way of, best way of putting that. But I, I'm just interested in finding out what happens with that plot of land and their investment, um, as you know, the bears brass is attached to it, but I, I'm, I'm going to throw that at Keith, man. What, what do you think? Lord Crimson, hold on. Lord Crimson, man. I think that he said, he's saying they spent 200 million already. I think it's upwards of 300 and something. No, it was 196, Man. I want to say. Was it? I thought it was 196. Okay, my bad. I got it wrong then. My bad, Laura Crimson. You're right. Good so cheese. Essentially, so essentially, they do have a couple of options, kids. Mm -hmm. The option is they can still choose to build the stadium in downtown Chicago and keep the plat of land in Arlington Heights and still build some type of megaplex out there where, again, they'll still be the landowners. They can still yeah. lease out everything and make their money that way. However, if you put a stadium out there, along with building of hotels and other th and other businesses and restaurants and things to that nature that you can put out there, it gets it would give them a better return, because essentially, you you go, you're already in the hole for that land as it is, and now you're going to go deeper in the hole to purchase land to be able to build a stadium in the city of Chicago. If your pocket is that deep, then why you been so cheap with the team all this time? Well, that's a that's a whole other question. But like the, the actual the actual answer to that question is that no, and it's a fair question. The actual answer to that question is that there's no there's been no divestment of any sort by this organization. They haven't invested in anything outside of football, and then we wonder why the coifers are a little bit tight when it comes down to football. Mm -hmm. So I I think this is like fifty years late but it has to happen um you know the mccaskey you know the, the mccaskey board has to invest in something else outside of football to generate revenue for the organization and i think arlington heights would be a great a great spin on the, on that whether they put a stadium there or not just develop some land put some hotels up put a casino up some restaurants like bring some money into the building you know what i mean bring to the, bring some money into the Absolutely. organization yeah, Absolutely. the thing about that, that it, you can also you can don't forget you could still build a community in there. I mean, you can get a a, a developer and you could build houses over there. Yes, All right? you so can. It's just so there's there's a lot of different things you can build. You can build hotels, but the, the one thing like there's not a lot of things in Arlington. Like you don't people don't travel to Arlington Heights for anything. Like here here's the here's the the, the proposed site for uh, Lakeshore Drive. See that the circle is the South Park. That's the South Lot. All right, that that's where the proposed stadium would be so it's the large enough oh, i didn't realize waldron already had his own street it does so it's waldron so they're, they're supposed to knock down waldron the the waldron deck which is by waldron street and the uh south lot so they have enough space yeah they have more than enough space there and you can come in through the bottom if you remove that comment by illinois jones please remove that comment 
and we uh -oh. can see. So you yeah. can see that you can. There's, a, there's actually a way you can go. You can get there via um, uh, trucks can get in there via McCormick Place. There's a place you can Sean, go. Yes. When you when you say there's enough space there, let me let me explain something to you. When you come to developing land, and there's there's a, there's terms called like setbacks and different things to that nature that affects the actual dimensions of that land. It looks like it's plenty of land at this moment until you start really building until your architecture come in and you start realizing what your setbacks are, how far you have to be away from the lake, how far you have to be away from Lakeshore Drive, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then that land begins to do this. It starts to shrink. So now you don't have the amount of land that you thought you had where out in Arlington, you have nothing but land to work with. You already know what your setbacks are and everything based off of your proposal that you have for the for the stadium that you propose that you're going to put out there. See, that's what I'm saying. I understand what Kevin Warren is doing and it, it's, it's perfect what he's doing, but this is another question that I have. Chicago's already shown you, the city of Chicago's already shown you what they thought of you because there's been certain things that they could have done to Soldier Fields that they have yet to do as a landlord. Now you're looking to go into some form of business partnership with them to build this, this beautiful stadium in the city of Chicago. What is the city of Chicago going to do for you, Chicago Bears, to accommodate you to make sure that you have the proper traffic um, access, so on and so forth, to really be able to erect this structure and get the optimal, opti optimal use of that, of that area and that land? And I, I'm just going to be honest, the, the way the politics are in Chicago, in Illinois, period, I question that. I will fault Ted Phillips in something. I think Ted Phillips went into this deal just excited about the land itself in Arlington Heights and got played and overbid and overpaid for the land. And Kevin Warren's having to clean all that up now. And he's, and he's having to tussle with them regarding the taxes because – they they were so accustomed to dealing with Ted Phillips, now they're dealing with somebody that understands real estate. That's what they're finding out now. And he's educating the McCaskies along the way, Kevin Warren is. So this is a this is definitely chess and not checkers. And it'll get done by before the end of the year with regard to what which direction they're gonna go in, but it's gonna cost them too. All right, man. How about this, man? Because I absolutely hate talking about this. I'll just be glad when the decision is made, they stick to it and start digging and pouring some damn concrete because I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let, let's talk about, because we got the Hall of Fame game coming up, which has been announced yay, yay. for August 1st on my mama's, my mama's birthday, man. And uh, Oh, I thought you were going to say, oh, my mama, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, you know what? That's going to be like, a, um, you know, that game, I, I think it's going to be a quarter. Maybe maybe a couple couple of series, depending on what they think of the quarterback they have and how much time they think he needs to really get himself together. But I think that's going to be a showcase for the younger guys for, for the most part. They'll get they'll get the uh, veterans out there for a couple series at yeah. best, I think. But that's probably probably about all you're going to see of the veteran guys. And I like to see I'd rather see the young guys anyway. I like to see what we have, whoever they bring it into the building. You know these new faces. I just like to see what these young rookies and maybe second year players, how they gel together, man. I'm looking forward to that. What do you think about that kid? Yeah, it'll be good to see across the board. I'd like to see the youngsters get out there, but uh, even then I'm, you know, there ain't, ain't going to be all that many youngsters, right? There's only, there's only four picks. So, you know, we'll, if, if they put Caleb out there, I'll be surprised. I'll be really surprised, but yeah, I'll throw this down to, to, to the Bishop. What are your thoughts, bro? I want to see the young guys. Just put the young guys out there. I don't care. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to see none of the vets until the third game of preseason. Let's see what these young guys are all about, especially that, that new young quarterback that's coming in. I want to see him get as many reps as possible. And then, uh, hey, man, let's get to some bad football in September. Sean? Yeah, I want to see the, the starters for a series or two. I then literally take off your pads. Take off your pads so there's no chance. Take off your pads. Take off your – hell, even go and shower. All right, in the middle of the, Put the, middle street of the clothes second, on. first quarter. Go back and shower. Come out. There'll, be, there'll, only be, there'll, be like there'll only be like 50 guys left on the on the sideline because you got 100 for the preseason. But, man, they're in there showering, come out, and it's not even 
it's not you're not even going back in. But I would like to see, you know, just like I said, a series or two. If it's two, three and outs, well, then it's two, three and outs, and it's only six plays we get to see. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to see the younger guys. I think the whole purpose of it is is for the the um, you know just the celebration of the Bears that are going in. I know Julius Peppers is kind of a hybrid, and he's going in as a Panther most likely. Um, but he did he did play for our franchise, uh, Steve McMichael. All right, like Junior said, I hope they they, they wear number seventy six on their patch on a uh, patch on their jersey this year. That would be dope because let's not let's not get it twisted. He's not just you know he wasn't afforded him the the opportunity to go because he was and all uh, and also ran. He led defensive tackles in sacks when he retired. He led the he was the, he led the defensive tackle all time leader in in uh, sacks by a defensive tackle. So this guy was no punk. All right, he's so. I hope that's like, like that. I hear saying that, but like that's with Richard Dent on your team. Yeah. 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 But you know what I mean? Like just, just to put a little bit more perspective on that, right? Like that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So he, he, it, yeah. it, it's, it would be good. I would, I, again, give me one, maybe two series with the, uh, the, the, the starters. And then, like I said, get them out. Hell, fly them back. <laughs> just get them out. I don't want them hurt. I don't want to just get you them know, playing the uniforms, nothing. Get out. You know what I want to see? I need I need to see us get into the new century here, man, and get some new damn uniforms. If nothing else, get some damn new socks, man. I'm sick of them striped socks. You want a damn I'm socks? Tired of them, man. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay oh, with that. Man. Man. Goodness, Those man. socks are yeah. terrible, man. Dude, you talking about hundred year old socks, man? Hundred year old socks. Man, they think that they've got to get rid of those things, man. Bring them things out for for. When you want so, to wear a classic uniforms game, you want to rock that for a Hall of Fame game, I get it. But please leave those things and, you know, save those things for a moment that you you you, you rock classic uniforms. Man, we don't need no striped socks every Sunday. You don't Kevin, like them, huh? Wow. Listen to me, man. I'm telling Tell you. That's how you really feel. My brother in Christ, Kevin Moore, <laughs> get rid of some damn socks, man. <laughs> get us some new uniforms, man. Get some alterations, something. No, nah, dude, it's... Dude, we all know what you get no match for Christmas, right? Like basically, right. don't get him some striped socks. Get, yeah, get him, no, get him bare striped Fifth. socks, and and he'll lose his mind. Please spare yeah. us from those uniforms. No, nah, those uniforms are classic. Yes, dude. They're yes, dope. yes. Yeah, yo, yo, I like them. Caught up in nostalgia, man. I want to see something new, man. I'm tired of the same old stuff. We look stale out there. If I was, if I was a free agent, I'd be, that's first thing I say, man. Let me see the uniforms. They they home and away. Nah, nah, I ain't rocking. I ain't doing that stuff. Man, everybody next up. Man. You can't blame yourself, up, bro. 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 Shut your goofy man. self up because when you're making fifty million dollars, you probably don't give a damn what kind of yeah. socks you're wearing. Watch, okay, watch okay? The they sign me. They sign me that this contract. Okay, watch, the game, watch game time closely and watch how many dudes are trying to hide those socks, rolling them down as far as they can so you don't see the uh, the stripes. They don't like them, bro. They do not like. Them. I'm cool with the uniforms. You know what? Guys, you know what? I'll I'll cool. ask the dudes. I'll ask the guys that. It, Would I'll, you please, when, man? When Would I'm in a locker, please? I'll just say, "Hey, listen, off the wall question. I know this is really weird. Do you have an issue? I got a guy who wanted to know. Do you have an issue with the socks? With the stripe, the stripes on the socks, on the white socks, and on the. And I don't even want to say the word white socks, even though I'm going Thursday. But I, I digress. <laughs> on the white socks and the navy socks, you had you like. Yeah, I, I don't. I think they. He digressed, yo. He digressed. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. I'll ask him. I'll ask him this year, bro. And I'll I'm, let you know. I'm gonna hold you to that, Sean, man. Bet. If I can, if I can bend Kevin Warren's ear, man. If we can get rid of them socks, man, I'm gonna be a happy camper, man. If we don't, if we don't do nothing else but get rid of them socks, man. Tell me, man, them socks stink. Wow. Socks. Stink. <laughs> Couldn't say Justin Fields. Maybe we can we can force a a, a, a socks change, a socks trade. Anyways, so what good, would you want? Good luck on that mission. Well, no I just want a solid sock, man. The solid socks are like everybody else that's into 2024, man. Damn. Is that too hard to ask for? Solid colored sock, man. We don't need no stripes every game, man. That looks, man, that looks bogus out you there. You don't even want a bear on the side of the sock? Man, we, whatever. As long as it's solid, man. I don't care. I'm just tired of the stripes. <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus. I digress. Yeah, you know, I just had to get that out there, man. You're I see your... For those in the chat, your, y'all, y'all, therapy, bro. Hey, everybody in the chat, how y'all feel about the socks, man? Y'all like striped socks or no? They all caught up in the nostalgia. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody gives a damn about socks out of my mouth, but I don't think anybody cares. It's funny. It just reminds me of Christmas. No, there's a lot of people in the chat are saying don't, look, don't mess look, with the look, classic. Look, a lot of people are look, saying. People are, okay, people having a I got to shake it up, kids. I got to shake it up. 
All right. I got zero opinion on this. I'm just letting know Matt go because I'm the type of guy who, who after years of losing socks in the laundry, just came to a, a it was I, like I just came to a brilliant realization. I went to this one store and they they sell they sell like 20, you get 20 black socks for like seven ninety nine. Twenty pairs like, or twenty socks? Pairs, not single oh, socks, but pair. pairs, okay. 20 pairs of socks, which is just insane. So yeah. I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm just never going to buy any other socks. I'm just going to rock black socks. <laughs> Hello, and that's dude. what I'm going to rock with. One gets Hello. lost. Who gets Hello. lost? Who cares? I got okay. a bunch more. I did that years ago, bro. Black, black socks. Yep. Hold on, they don't, guys. You, guys you can wear them when they're dirty, too. Guys, you guys, There's a whole song. There's a whole song for it. You guys got to see this. Jay Sanders, socks sponsored by British Knights. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> oh, no. See, people people think I'm crazy, but when I go to La Garra or the flea market that's in English, I'll get those things. So they'll sell black, gray, a package of black, gray, and white socks. It'll be three of each. Man, and I'll get two pairs or two bundles or three bundles. <laughs> and just like you said, you mix now you got black socks, it's the same sock. Gray socks are the gray, same sock. You ain't got to worry about putting them together. White socks are the same one. <laughs> It's just mix and match. You ain't got to worry about oh, trying to find socks. Man. Man, Illinois you know Jones that. just killed the chat right there. That's the one. I, I, hey, I, Illinois. I, I, hey, Illinois, man, stop playing with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's too funny. Oh. Hey, hey, so Terry Franken oh. up with the gold toe socks, man. He's a snob, he says. All thanks, right, thanks for the super chats, Kerry. Now, now I get it. I get it. Now. I, 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 I took the I done took the whole show off the rails, man. Let me. Let yes, me you have. Man. All about some socks, man. All about the socks, man. I can't stand it, man. I can't lie to you. All right, so Eberflus spoke today, man, and um, here's here's the quote. And I can't tell you exactly. This is an exact quote, so I'm kind of paraphrasing this. Um, at the night, he was asked about the ninth pick, guys, and 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 you know he responded to it. We're gonna get. Uh, a player that helps the quarterback or, or affects the quarterback. Two words, either helps or affects. Kids, how does that break down in your mind what he just said? He he kind of – that was coded. Yeah. That was kind of coded, but it, it breaks down to two spots in my mind. Three. And three? Oh, no, I don't see no three. Oh, left tackle. Tackle, and I see receiving. Oh. Or, or – or... The end. Or defensive end, right? So those are those would be the three. It's the same three, right? He he played his cards super close to his vest, and then he turned around. And he said, "We're picking the best player available at that position." Um, I still think they're gonna trade. I'm I didn't gonna hear say. that. I didn't hear that kid. I didn't hear him say right. he's gonna take the best player available. That's I'll that's hear. that's how he ended that little conversation. Quarterback or okay. quarterback. Yeah, he said he said best player available towards the end of that little conversation. So, like I say, it, it's one of those three positions, either wide receiver. You know, again, my thoughts, left tackle to protect the quarterback because that's what you're finding that high up into the draft. Or you're getting a defensive end. And, and I know they've taken a closer look at Dallas Turner. Um, there has been some some looks at Joe Alt. Um, and, you know, there's there's. There's growing speculation between the two kids at LSU at this point, uh, neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, but if it was me, and I'll say this one more time, I would trade back a little bit, secure a second round pick, and then secure yourself a Brian Thomas Jr. I think that's probably the best case scenario that uh, you know that puts you into the second round to be able to fill one more hole with a high caliber pick. But that's me. That's my thoughts on it. Keith, what do you think? Well... I would like to see him trade back as well to secure a second round pick just to make sure they get an extra pick. But more importantly, if they use that pick, I want to see them go get a DN because my biggest, my biggest concern, I know he's been durable, man. And I'm knock on wood. I want to make sure that we got somebody to back up Mr. Sweat. Yeah. It's a good you know call. What I'm saying it's just mm -hmm. that simple. I mean, I, it's so deep and wide receiver, if we don't use a first round pick on a receiver, I'm not going I'm not going to lose my I'm not going to lose my grits on it. You know what I'm saying, but I will tell you this. If we don't get a Hold D, on, man. you got grits? Oh yeah, bro. You hungry? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Kiss my grits and took a whole nother meaning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm good for coming up with stuff. I create I create words and sayings, brother. Words and sayings. 
Straight out of Mel's Diner, bro. We, we went back to 1984 with that one. I'm like, what's that? What's that? Me TV? I, I love it. Hey. Uh, hey, hey, Bishop no. TV, baby. <laughs> but no, I won't. I would like to see them use that if they're going to use the pick, man. Even if they could trade back, just, just depending on how the draft goes, and they can still get their DN and, and pick up a second round pick. Whatever, whatever they can do. But I want them to get a DN, me personally, because th- this draft is weak in DNs. So I, I'm more focused on that position myself. What about you, Sean? It's going to be tough for me. It's tough because if you're if they're there, then I think if if you're there and you have you're you're staring at a Joe Alt and a Malik uh, a Dunze or Neighbors, it's tough. So I think you may have to trade back. Um, if it, because it's not, I mean one's already gone. One of the quarterbacks is gone. It's either Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams is gone with the number one pick. All right. So then one of those two guys. All right, Drake May. Maybe maybe JJ McCarthy jumps up in there, all right. And then you know Marvin Harrison Jr., all right. And then Donze or Neighbors, that's one of them. Maybe you go get a tackle. Maybe a Joe Alts there. That's seven spots already. And now that we're back on the clock because we had the first one, seven spots, all right. And then we're back on the clock again. We're we. I think the the best move would be to trade back. But I mean, if you get, it's hard to say, man. If you get, it's hard to pass on a on a on a. On a, on a a left tackle that you could plant there for the next 10 years is what you're, what you're thinking. I mean, it's not a sexy pick, but God bless it. You know, darn well, that's going to, whoever's going to, whoever the quarterback is going to be, my goodness, you got one hell of an offensive line to go with your, your upgraded receiver, your addition, not upgrade, your additions to receiver, your addition to tight end, your upgrade in the running back room, man, dude. That that's that's and I know I want neighbors or I want Brock Bauer. There's a lot of different weapons that I want, but damn it, you know you know as well as I do, it all starts up front, and yeah. it don't matter how good you are. Ask Patrick Patrick Mahomes. I right, had the Super Bowl a couple years ago, I right, against Tampa. Don't matter how good you are, what weapons you got, you can't throw passes from sitting on this on the on the turf. Hey Sean, and Sean, so you that, know what I like I, what I heard was, and you, I think you'll like this because because you can probably imagine how this plays out. Cole said basically when they got back from the owners meeting, they was going to get together and everybody go to their respective rooms. Uh huh. Get the guys that you're going to stand on the table for at for that pick. The right. guy, and when you got him, come back into the room and we're going we're going to have it out right here in front of everybody, and we're going to get to a consensus about what where we think we ought to we ought to go. And he's ultimately going to have the uh, the final say in the matter, but it's it's going to be fun that I would imagine to see everybody stand on the table for the guy that they think will help us the most. Quite frankly, I'm I'm fifty fifty. I, I believe the receiver class is uber talented. I mean, I think that, I mean and when I say uber talented, I am not over exaggerating. It is crazy, man. Yeah. And the the old tackle class is that much uh, more exciting or more. Or more, and so Sean's argument: it's kind of hard to pass up your your, your bookend left tackle for for the next ten years, and it's also a conundrum you put yourself in because because the uh, receiver class going is will start to diminish a little bit after like the ninth or tenth pick, and so you got you know you got a thirty one going on thirty two year old receiver. You don't know what's going to happen with DJ Moore whether he's going to want to sign an extension. You really don't know. You can just assume that you do and you just hope he does but there's a conundrum there and so you have to backfill that spot one way or the other you know it's 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 a tricky situation and i i, I don't think they go wrong at either i wouldn't be upset if it was a, a tackle i wouldn't be upset if it was a receiver i think i think both of them are equally needed under the circumstances would you be upset if it was a defensive end i think so yeah i think that's i think that's not necessarily a need need right now as much as so the, the, I think the talent level at, at DN, comparable to those other two positions I just said, it's like night and day, bro. It's like Play me out a scenario if sweat goes down then. What's that? Play me out a scenario if sweat goes down. Oh, that's, a, that's a scenario I don't even want to talk about. I'm going to knock on Well, you got to talk about it, it, it though, brother. It is a real – it's honestly, Keith, when you brought it up, I wanted to char- I wanted to, to chime in on it too. Um, it's a re- It's a real it's – a, it's a real situation. If, if he yeah. does get hurt – the entire defensive line goes right back to where it was before he joined the team. And that wasn't a very good defensive line. 
So, you know what I mean? If you don't have some kind of a bookend to at the very least replace his spot if he does get hurt, but also add additional pressure when both of them are on the field, the drop off is just going to be that much less, um, you know, in case of injury. I think that's an important factor to, to sort of. Yeah, but you want to go at it this year because next year's draft, next year's DN draft is is the edge draft is yeah is, because is the injury injury can occur this year just as well as it can occur next year. But if you don't have a stop gap this year and that injury occurs, then there goes the season. They can get a stop gap. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, well, they haven't done it, it, it thus far in free agency. Early. It doesn't have to be that early. There's some guys that's like most yeah, of the really good DNs in the league. They were not drafted early in the draft. They were drafted later on, mid, mid to late rounds, and would develop. And I don't, I don't think, I, I believe, I just believe this, man. You got, you got later picks. And some guys, if you guys are, are really good at scouting, and you feel good about the development you got inside that building, you can pretty much get that. I think. What is that? What is? It, what do we have? A one night. The same you can do at receiver. Um, you just described on. receivers. I in well, the last on, ten let me years, finish, man. Let me finish. No, you're I'm already. Like everybody done. has their own virtues about. Who we should we should drive? I don't think anybody should get upset about it. I'm just saying after evaluating the, the entire every position, well, you got upset about. I'm socks. just telling you, man. It is it is when I tell you when you have a coach like Eric Washington, and you see some of those guys that are gonna go later. I mm. like our chances getting a, a DN later on than I do a better receiver or a better offensive tackle. That's all yeah. I'm saying. We got four picks, brother. Four. I know that, man. I know we got that. Four picks. But you uh, wanna, you, so you want to you want to you okay? I I can understand wanting to get the left tackle. I want I won't argue with you on that one. At that at, at that spot, I get it. But a receiver versus a DN when you know you have a DN drop off significant as it is in this draft, you really want to take that chance? And I yeah. get it that Mr. Washington is a great D coordinator, but let's let's just be real. You're talking about replacing Mr. Sweat if he happens to go down with a later I, I, round I, pick. Yeah, I, but you can I, you can say that, but you can say that, but well, you got to replace DJ Moore. You got to replace Darnell Wright. You got to replace the linebackers. Yeah. You got to replace. I mean, you can't just sit there and say and one guy. I mean, because then you're going to have to try and get a, a, a stud at every position, and you just can't do that. You just We're can't. Going to agree to disagree this afternoon. Yeah, I guess we will. Let, let me. Guess we will. Let, me, let me jump in with the bishop here. You have to think about the significance of the edge position, though. The edge position is probably a little bit more important than linebacker. And as I've shown you guys in the past, I mean, everybody's talking about getting a wide receiver. The best wide receivers in the game have usually came from past either late first round. Or later rounds, and and stud stud edge rushers normally come early in the draft, earlier, and and it's it's a fall off this year. We don't have any. We don't even have anybody on the left side. I mean, on the opposite side of Sweat. Now you can say Walker. Walker does his best work inside. He does his best work inside. Who D Rob? You definitely need. To, I've said this all along. The value versus uh, importance. Is definitely a deep defensive end. Did you did you check out any Jacob Martin tape? Man, who's that? My mailman. No, okay, I'm just saying before you go poo pooing on him, check him I out. Ain't gonna poo poo on him, but nobody knows who that is. I, you got to know some stuff. I'm, I'm telling you who he is. I'm well, telling. We you. we hope we hope he can contribute. Okay, but that's, that's the, the, and that's that's, that's, that's that. actually the point, Chris, that that you're trying to make is whether we. You know whether they're looking at and and, and I'm just going to frame this specifically with defensive end. If they're looking at a defensive end, the drop off from a from a guy who you know you, you can count on. Yeah, he's going to go out there and he's going to he's going to do damage. He's massive once you get to the second the, the second round. And let's just face facts: we don't have a second round pick. After the second round, it's even worse by way of of defensive end. I don't. I don't know how else they're going to yeah. well, edge I mean, rusher, right? Like yeah. specifically, specifically edge rusher, hard to find once you once you, like once that second round is over. Um, uh, Marshawn Nealon, maybe like if he's not scooped up in the towards the end of the second, you might be able to find him maybe in the third. Like, and that's like a maybe, but 
Braylon it's Price would tough. be maybe another one. So, no, he's – because there's so few of them, Chris, Braylon Trice is going in the second round. I, I'll, I'll I'll knock on wood. I have to fight on wood. He could. He could. I, I but, knew – see, I, go ahead, Chris. No, I was just going to say, I mean, in my eyes, I'm not a, I'm not that high on Dallas Turner. And he's got – he's got – he's got, you know, a, a lot of things I like about him. He's just a little light. I mean, to me, it's verse and uh, Latu. Because of, of because of their profiles and, and their length and, and the ability probably to put on a little bit more weight and not hurt their their bendability or their or their get off. Yeah. So I mean, to me, those are the right guys. It's just not to me, it's not about just drafting the position. It's got to be the right guy for every especially when you only have four picks. Well, I knew. Hold on, Cass, because I knew this is because because we running. We I knew this would happen when we started talking about uh, what Iberflu said with the ninth pick because everybody has their virtues of what they think, <laughs> and nobody, you know, we ain't sitting here trying to tell you know like you don't know what you're talking about because I know what I'm talking about better than you. No, that's not what we're doing. Everybody has their own virtues, that, and what that's exactly do. what I'm doing. <laughs> no, man. Hey, listen, the producer listen, extraordinaire, gonna, the man of God himself. I know more than you. We're gonna stick, we're gonna stick a clip in that, man. We'll we'll bring this. We'll talk about this a little bit more as we move along, man. Because we got like less than thirty days before they're on the clock and have to make a choice. But uh, let's get to a quick uh, 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 station ID, and we'll talk about some more of the stuff on the other side. Best Chicago Bears content anywhere. You catch Nomad Live pregame one hour prior to kickoff and Nomad at night post game, and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. Central on all the most popular streaming platforms, and only on the Nomad Network. That is right, everybody. Please make sure you go to Sports Zone Chicago and hit the sub over there. Keep up the uh, good work with uh, my man Superback over there in Sports Zone Chicago, and definitely make sure you do it over here at the Nomad Network. If you're new to the channel, you're just starting to view the content, man. We please, please, we will really appreciate your uh, uh, support. Let me just say something. Get off, get this off my uh, chest, because uh, I'm starting to hear people talking a little bit greasy, a little bit greasy about the fact that all those guys over there on Nomad Network don't know what they're talking about. They got this whole Justin thing, Justin Fields things wrong, proves they don't know what they're talking about. Let me give you a little history since you're running your mouth, whether it's a podcaster, whether it's a uh, reporter from uh, uh, the, the local beat. Go back to before the draft when I was at the bar room. And I'll tell you what, who got what right then. I pointed out Darnell Wright. I pointed, and this is after a scout told me he, he's not a fit. I pointed out, or Jervon Dexter, after a scout told me he was not a fit. I pointed out Tyreek Stevens. All three of those guys, you don't want to believe me? Go check the, the Barroom Network and some of the content we created right before the draft. It's out there in the atmosphere for you to see. Check my work. Not only that, we drafted all those guys. Recently, more recently, coming into this offseason, no matter what do you guys think they're going to do in, in free agency. Now, I got pushback from the guys um, the guys that were on the panel at the time, even kids. I was like, they need to get a running back. They need to get a different kind of running back. Okay, no matter, I don't think they're going to spend that kind of money on, on a running back when they can just draft one. Okay. They need to get a safety. We just got rid of Eddie Jackson. No, they can draft a safety. What did they do? First couple of things they did. Did both of those things. So you want to talk about accuracy while you've got, you know, po other podcasters' names in your mouths and you, the reporters time trying to talk down on us because they felt like we didn't know what we were talking about about the Justin Fields move. Check the history. Check the rap sheet, homie. Check that out. I did that. So run your mouth all you want to. We get stuff accurate over here more times than not. And so I just had to get that off my chest. I'm just hearing people telling me in my inbox, some things that uh, you know people are saying. Let's get let's get clear about some things, man. I'm I, me and this network over here. We've been more accurate than not, so we just put that on the record so everybody understands. But I digress. Let's get to this next point, man, because uh, Eberflus, not Eberflus, but uh, polls 
heard the whole conversation that was had with uh, uh, RG3 in the statement that he made about what Caleb Williams should do in regards to, uh, you know, coming to Chicago or not. He was and reportedly, I'm, I'm gonna, I got a quote here. He was pissed off and he continued to say that, you know, the past is the past and he's here to break that cycle. Kids, what do you guys think about all that? Don't we have the clip? Can we play the clip? Oh, I don't know if we have it, man. I I asked Chris for it. I think, I think, oh, okay. Sorry. Go, mm. no, I'm sorry, kids. No, no, no. You can go, man. You you seem to be right into it. No, no. I did, I was just seeing if we had the clip. That's all. Okay. All right. Um. Jeez. I don't. <sighs> I don't know how much of that cycle he's broken. That that is that remains to be seen, guys. You know, like I, I I hear what he's trying to. I hear what he's saying, and this also sort of harkens to some of that whole, you know, receipts portion that you were just sort of going through. Any, you know, if I was a mind reader, I could sit here and say that I was a hundred percent accurate, and and like, it, and then maybe I would be. Um, I'm not. This this is always going to be a, a an exercise in speculation, really, to take a look and see where the Bears can go with these things, right? And and Poles has made his decisions. I'm going to be completely frank and say that I wouldn't have made the same decisions. About that simple. I'm not Ryan Poles though, so my opinion only matters as much as it does. Right, um, he's going to make the decisions that he feels safe, and 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 the decisions that he feels support his position within the Bears organization long term, um, as well as what he feels is best for the overall um, growth of this squad. Now, in my opinion, I believe that things should have been done to fill those holes and provide depth, and that should have been. Um, you know that should have been the linchpin or the or the you know the the, the focus of this off season, and then you can make major swings and tweaks after. He did it the opposite, right? So am, am I angry about that? Do I feel any kind of way about it? I don't. All I all I can say is Ryan Poles did what he felt was the best move for him and the organization, and I'm going to follow him and support him as he goes through. Mind you, if we're talking about the cycle, there's things to be said. And I'm going to completely leave Justin Fields' name out of this other than me just saying it just there. And <laughs> right, retaining Matt Eberflus is probably the biggest question mark on that whole thing, right? If you really thought that you were going to move forward with a brand spanking new um, you know, quarterback under center, man – you might as well have just did the whole thing, right? You, you might as well have gotten rid of Eberflus, brought in Jim Harbaugh, as a, for instance, did the whole thing and made it a, a, a major preparation for this new kid coming in the door. He did half of it. So again, there's certain, certain parts of this cycle, if we're talking about a cycle, that I'm not quite, um, you know, I'm not quite 100% in full agreement with. But it, again, doesn't matter if I am. He's going to do what he feels is going to protect him and protect the squad. So I'm going to continue to watch it. And I hope that, again, everything works out and shakes out the right way. But right now, just if we're talking about the way this all shakes and is framed out, the big question mark after you get rid of Justin Fields is, wait a minute, what did you keep Eberflus for? And we're going to find out the actual answer to that at the end of this season. Woo. You unpacked a lot there, kids. I, I did. I, this, I think what's what's beginning to hold true is in the in today's NFL, as a new GM, that three year mark is that mark where that new GM is looking to put his stamp on that organization, whether it be his own quarterback or his coach, if not both. What I see Ryan Poles doing and what I think he's been pretty good at doing is insulating himself with regards to certain decisions he make to make it look like it wasn't necessarily his decision, but it falls upon someone else's shoulders, uh, i.e. Eberflus. You ask, why did he keep him? He kept him because he was able to hold, keep a, a, an entire locker room together when it was in his most tumultuous point 
So he gave so he gave him an olive branch for this coming season while he makes a move to put his stamp on the organization by bringing in his own quarterback. Now, with that being said, he also went and got an offensive court an offensive coordinator and an offensive staff. That's where the insulation comes in at. So whatever occurs this season, less the playoffs and find Eberflus escorted out of the door, he already has his new head coach in the building. That's the insulation part of it. And, and, and again, it could be conspiracy theory. I could, it could be some truth or fact to it. We don't know. We won't know until this coming season plays out and how everything shakes out in it. But this guy is intent on, this is the year that he intended on putting his stamp on the organization as a GM and he's done that now because he's getting ready to draft his quarterback, and he's and he's rocking with the with the coach that he felt was able to galvanize and keep the troops together when it had some tumultuous times from week four all the way through the end of the season. What you say, Sean? Well, he's kind of done both. Like he's he's here to break curses <clears throat> and and all that stuff, and but he's 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 repeating the cycle. All right. To a degree, now now you're getting a, a, a rookie quarterback, or you, you know you had a rookie quarterback, or you or you had a rookie quarterback that wasn't yours, and now you got a new quarterback with a with a guy who's probably going to be on the hot seat if this thing doesn't work out. It happened the last couple of things. All right, um, the one thing the the difference, with that, and that's a fact. I mean, whether you whether you like it or not, that's a fact. That is exactly what he's done. If you look at the last couple of quarterbacks, however, what he's done. He's brought in people with experience for this new quarterback. That has not been done. Okay. That has not been done. You have an actual play caller. Okay. You had. Uh, but, but yes, it has. Right. right. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it right back at you, but um, just think Trubisky and Matt Nagy. Right. Matt Nagy so they brought a in a caller. guy to do that. Okay. Matt Nagy called what? A couple of, a couple of games. Is, is, I said, a pro, I said, he wasn't, guys. you're right. You're and right. That was all Andy Reid who gave him a, gave him a couple of, Couple of games. Now, if you said if this was, you know, Eric Bieniemy, well, then maybe a different story. But Matt Nagy had a couple of games, you know, and you know, if so, technically, yeah. But realistically, I you're getting guys, you're getting proven guys. All right, let me say that. There's, you got proven guys now. You've got a guy who's been a who's who's turned around a quarterback, who's developed Geno Smith. You got a guy who was a quarterback coach. You got a guy who's an offensive coordinator in uh, uh, in Brown, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Thomas Brown, okay, who wanted to be who applied here. So you're getting proven people for this new quarterback, unlike the previous quarterbacks, the previous situation. So it's kind of half of one and and the kind of half of the other. So it's it's interesting. And that maybe that's the way he's gonna break it. Okay, but I and I, I told you before, I felt that he had a, a conversation, okay. I felt he had a conversation with Nag with uh and Nessa Nagy. With Iberflu saying, "Hey, look, look, I'm gonna gut your team. First year is gonna be god awful. We build it. I got to get an offense together, and you take. He goes, I don't know how good the offense is gonna be. And after that, after we rebuild the defense and get 24, will be the first year I can truly, truly evaluate you. You, I'll take the heat for 24, for 22, the, uh, gutting this defense. You take the heat for 23." Depending on, on what I can get for this offense in 24, I can truly evaluate you. And I think that's the situation that we're in. Okay. Kids going kids just gonna grab some super chats. I could I could opine on everything that was said, but let's let's get to the people that's contributing right now. Kids, if you don't mind, Brian, don't put anything up, man. He's just doing super chats. I got you guys. Hey, no maniacs. Thanks for joining us. Um, my guy Daryl Gibson, OG No Maniac, has to say this, K-A. I'm not sure what initials those are. If somebody else is smarter than me, clue me in. Keenan DJ Moore. Keenan, Keenan Allen. Allen. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm slipping. Um, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore are not long-term answers. You had number two. You had two number one picks two years in a row. You will yield two blue chip players. Quarterback. Right tackle. That's what his thoughts are. I'm I'm with you, Daryl. Um, I wouldn't go RT, but uh, there's no chance they aren't going QB. 
I don't know what what's the rest of you guys you guys want to touch on 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 Daryl's uh Daryl Super. No, DJ Moore's a long term answer. He's twenty five years old. Mm, but he <laughs> but they didn't lock, but they didn't lock him down, right? So he's got they a year still got his go contract. Back. Yeah, he's still got a year. You don't have, you don't still... have to. I mean, come on, you don't have to extend the guy in the middle of his contract. That's why it's a contract. You have until the till it's over. Over. Did you say over? No. They have until the time, or if they feel like it. And listen, if they feel, if DJ continues to have a, and they already talked about it, they mentioned DJ Moore in, in an extension. So yeah, he's coming. He's he's got one year left. You saw what they did with Billings. They didn't even wait for his first year to be to be over before they extended him. They're gonna work on something for DJ Moore. All right, he is a lot. The dude's twenty five. Gonna be twenty six years old. Come on, man. It, that's another five, a good four to six years of top-notch wide receiver play. If he chooses yeah, to stay. He's, yeah. he's going to turn 27 here in a couple weeks. Yeah, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's four years. Keenan Allen's 31. All right, that's four years. And you get another two years of him being, you know, average and, you know, or, you know, taking a step back to the younger guys. Come on, man. I, I, another three-year deal, four-year deal, and we're good. Daryl Gibson, all I can say to that is I hope that because it takes two to tango, I hope he uh resigns and does an extension here when it's his time to do it. So, all I can say is I hope, man. And as far as the uh right tackle goes, um, <laughs> I've said this a couple of times if it's me, um, I'd probably get that right tackle and then uh slide uh, uh, what's his name, Darnell, Darnell right over to the right. right. That's just me, man. But you know, those are my virtues. But we got another super chat to get to, if you don't mind, kids. Got you. Our guy can book a world two dollar super chat. Holes is a good BSer, but there's truth in his BS. Um, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 like, I'm gonna go ahead. No man. No, no. You want to <laughs> yeah. go ahead? You do that, man. <laughs> it just brings me back to a good old uh, Paul Rudd movie, but I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave that alone. Um, in in any event, yeah. Like he, it's line season. He's doing a great job of weaving his words in in into the ether in between, right? So, um, I'm I'm trying my best not to take everything he says as law. Um, I am gonna give Ryan Poles a lot of respect in saying that one of the most refreshing parts about having him as a GM is just his, you know, his his ability to be forthwith and 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 you know, and transparent with most of the things that he, you know, most of the stuff that he's giving us. Um, even then, in his transparency, we have seen stuff like, yeah, I want to keep Roquan Smith, and then Roquan goes. So, you know, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to take. Yeah, but Roquan asked for a trade, bro. He's like, I want out of here. Well, that was that was after he asked for the trade when he when he said that stuff, though, right? So after he asked no, for I the think trade, it was different. I, you think? I I, it, okay, I thought it was. I thought it was. I, I, I don't know. know. That, in 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 any event, there's been some double speak, but mm -hmm. for the most part, he's been pretty forthwith. And I and I and then I and then I compare that to the previous organizations that have been in and around the Chicago Bears. And man, I'm so happy it's not Matt Nagy word salad or or Ryan Pace hiding behind a corner peeking in. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the type of stuff that I'm I'm much happy we're we're I'm very happy we're past and beyond, and uh, you know I, I give the guy his his you know I give the devil his due in this in this respect. He at the very least gives us just enough to make heads or tails of what's going on. Well, I, let, me, let me touch this really quick. We gotta we gotta get out of here so we can get get to this last topic, man. I would say just to be real brief about it, King. I think a good GM needs a little bit of BS or in him. To be quite frank with you. You gotta have a little bit of that in you. Does it take better. Away, does it take away from your integrity <laughs> with the fan base? Um, you know, some people might say yes. I might say, you know, I don't think he's lost integrity with me. I just I don't take him at face value anymore. He's tongue in cheek with me now. You know what I mean? Just based on how everything played out. I'm not upset with him about anything. It's his virtues. I, decisions that he makes. That's those are the decisions that he makes. But I digress. King, thank you for the uh, contribution. Let's get to this last subject, man, because this is this might get a little bit uh, interesting. Is there a last move, kids, up Magic Magic Johnson's sleeve in order to try to pry this number one pick away from Ryan Poles, or is Ryan Poles he is he ironclad on keeping this spot? 
I think the last move Magic Johnson has is a, is a baby skyhook. I think that's what that looks like. Unfortunately, in this scenario, you know, Shaquille O'Neal coming around the corner and he's just just swatting that baby out into the stands. So I, I don't think he's got anything, any tricks left to play. Um, you know, I, I really don't. I think the real trick at this present moment is Ryan, is Ryan Poles. If Ryan Poles has a trick up his sleeve, then you know, then maybe Magic might pull a trick out of his too, right? Like that's it's about that simple. This at, at this present time. Whereas before there was a little bit of ambiguity at this present time, this entire, like these first three picks in the draft holistically rolled through Ryan Poles is, um, you know, he's, he's got full control. There's no questions about this full holistic, total totalitarian control over these first three picks of the draft. If he decides to make a move and trade out, that's a decision he has to make. That decision could be made again, in a situation where um, you know where where Caleb goes up to him and says, "Hey, look, I don't, I, I want to go elsewhere. Cool, let me wheel and deal." Or maybe he falls out of love with Caleb and falls in love with another guy that that he's he zeroes in on. I don't think Magic Johnson at this present. Like if Magic Johnson was had tricks, man, he should have been dealing cards a long time ago and, and waving wands a couple weeks back before Justin got moved because that's when you. That's when things were ambiguous. That's when you could have come in and said, "Hey, like you have options." That option's gone now. There is it's, you know, there's folks out there who would love to say Tyson Bagent. You know, Tyson Bagent will be the will be the option, and then you can get another quarterback. I just don't see it. You had a quarterback on the uh, on on the roster that you could you know you could move things around. Now you don't. You let him go. So you have to get a quarterback. If Caleb Williams is not the top quarterback in this class, I would be very surprised given that's almost a, a consensus at this point. So uh like I don't I don't know I don't know what kind of lucky charms Magic Magic Johnson got, but he he needs he needs clovers and rainbows. He needs like you name it. He, he needs to, he needs all of that and he needs to put that in a in a pot of gold and and present that. To Ryan Poles, and I and I, I can almost guarantee he'll do something like that anyhow come draft day. But I just don't see Ryan moving at this point. Go ahead, Keith. Well, I think there's always a possibility. We won't find out until draft day, and I really think it's all going to be predicated on tomorrow's pro day uh, with a particular uh, quarterback that has his pro day tomorrow based on the information that, that they get tomorrow, as well as further evaluations after tomorrow's pro day, um, whatever's going to happen to be on or before the clock on draft day. And essentially, I think the only last piece of magic, that trick that magic would have, is he's going to have to come up off of uh, a 2026 first round pick. That would be the only thing I could see to, to get him to move up off of that that number one spot and not take who we think he's going to take. Go ahead, Sean. There's still a lot of play, man, and you guys are you guys are are, are not seeing it. I, mean, I don't mean the pan. I mean everybody. If Caleb Williams decides to cancel his visit with Chicago, that is a possibility. That is a possibility. He already pushed it back. So there's a possibility, which means oh, they Sean, don't have it. Sean, they, you know, just before you get going on that, man, I just want to have another there. little bit of information. They're planning on doing installs with him when he comes. That's I yeah. heard. That's what I heard. So that, that I, that's that's what that's what, that's what. But you had, but the question was, is there one last play? All right, this is what this is what Matt Eberflew said today. He's like, we're going to continue installs. So yeah, it's, but there's one last play. If if that's the thing, obviously they have to be in cahoots with. With magic, I mean, a guy knows a guy knows a guy knows a guy knows a guy, and if he wants to go to Washington, he he can he can cancel that visit. You're asking and you're asking how likely? Uh, not very, but that's still a possibility. It's still a possibility because no one has his, he, he he can't. No one's going to trade for him, and if he only goes to Washington, and they're the only ones with his medicals, that's the only ones the Bears can trade with. That's the only one anyone will trade with. Will trade for Caleb because without his medicals. He still has some power by the fact that he didn't take his medicals. And if he if he cancels his his trip to Chicago, and again, it might not happen. All right? But there is still that chance. And that's Magic's last play. Well, I'll I'll just 
I'll just end this conversation with this, man. Sean's right. There's still 30, I mean, 20 some odd days to play out. Things could happen, but I'll be, I'll, I'll put a, put some icing on this with this. I don't, I don't, I think he'll be, it's, it's probably a cold. You have to probably pry that out of, out of Ryan Poles' cold dead hands, man. I think he's taking that pick and it's going to be Caleb Williams. And I don't even think he's willing to answer the phone anymore. However, we do have uh, on Thursday, I believe it is, on the 28th, we do have Jaden Daniels' uh, uh, pro day. And I like to see the contingency down there and how they're interacting with him. And, you know, I want to hear if some of the same things are happening that happened at Caleb Williams' pro day. Did they take him out? They spend time with him the same way that they did. I think that that will be telling if because if they do similar or the same things with uh, Jaden Daniels that they did with uh, with uh, Kayla Williams, that means that they're still keeping their options open. You know, we don't know how, how well uh, Jaden Daniels can impress them when he when they go down there. We just don't know. But it looks to me and this is right now as of what's today, the 26th, the 26th as of March 26th. You probably got to pry that pick out of Ryan Poles' cold, dead hands. And so before we get out of here, you guys, let's give some shout-outs and some pleasantries. Before before we do that, we got one more uh, super chat from Vic Perez, kids. Our guy, Vic Perez, $10 super chat. Thanks for coming out there, Vic. Hey, guys, switching. Hey, back hey up. guys. Oh. Hey, guys, switching gears. Wanted to get your take on Deion Sanders proclaiming his sons aren't going to play in certain cities, saying it's going to be an Eli. Hmm. Now, we did, we, we did that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, we touched on that yes on yesterday's show a little bit, Vic. Thanks for coming through. By all means, take a listen to yesterday's show. We'd appreciate that. At the same time, I'll give you, you know, my two cents, mostly as a father. Um if Dion says that's what he's gonna get his kids to do, I don't blame him for a second, right? Like I, I not for a second. We did touch on the NIL money case scenario a little bit and how it's going to affect and potentially change the way that uh, you know the top of the draft looks as we move forward into the future. So these are going to be you know situations like this. I think are going to become a lot more commonplace, especially when players can turn around and go, "Hey, you know what? Like I will just." I'll just spend another year at college and make a bunch of cash. Cool. Like I can, I can go back another year. I can do an extra year, make another $11 million like Caleb. Don't really have to rush into the NFL considering that I'm going to a team that I don't really want to go to. Uh, we'll see who's available next season. Sure. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame them for a second. I think it's, I think a lot of these things need to be renegotiated. I think the NH or the NFL PA um, needs to get with the NIL and start to iron some of these things out, you know, sooner than later because issues can arise as we move forward. Vic Perez, just to just to uh, respond to that, I think he even went further today and said that he his kids are only playing for the Cowboys. I think the Ravens. I think maybe two other teams. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but he got even more specific than he was when he made the statement. So I believe him when he says it. You know what I mean? And I don't blame them, you know what I mean? Because, you know, that's their future, man. You know, you you, you see too many people's uh, uh, fortunes just go to the wayside just because they get drafted to the wrong team with the wrong kind of infrastructure on how to bring up young young football players. And that's unfortunate, you know. And, and our organization is one of them that, that are looked at in that light, to be quite frank with you, and that's unfortunate too. But hopefully Ryan Poles is right about what he says about wanting to change the culture and stop that trend and reverse everything that's been going on. And I, lo and I hope he does. I'm going to be rooting for him to do that because it needs to happen, man. We've had, we've had kind of a black eye. We've, we're a black eye organization. We got a bad reputation for different reasons and I believe we've earned it. And so if that, I just want to respond to Vic. Thank you for the, uh, the contribution, man. I appreciate it. But let's, let's get finished with some pleasantries kids before we get out of here. Right on, right on. Jose Sanchez, thanks for coming to the show, brother. Saw most of your chats here. Hopefully I've responded to um, you know, the vast majority of them. Glad to have all you new man maniacs in the chat, just causing a whole bunch of ruckus. So much inquiry, so many questions, and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more answers once this draft is through and clear. Um, in the meantime, I'm super stoked that you guys would spend your, your afternoon with us here at the Nomad Network on Nomad Live. 
I'm having a blast with my my homies here, the Bishop, Sean Sierra, aka Greg, and my guy Nomad. We're gonna uh, we're, we'll be here every day doing it for you Monday through Friday, and uh, down to you, Bishop. Bear down. Everybody in the chat, thank you very much for for hanging out with us for a little over an hour. We do appreciate it. As always, I love chopping up with my guys here on the panel. Nomad, kids, Chris in the back, and uh, Brian as well. And my man, the super back, I am not calling you Greg. Therefore, uh, <laughs> but as always, it's just it's always great to chop it up and talk bear football, you know. And uh, I'm just going to leave you guys with this today. Have a safe rest of your day. You know, someone put it in. They someone put in the chat. They're not going to chat that they're not going out to uh, Jaden Daniels. They're going to. They're leaving right from from Orlando. Uh, Ryan Paul said that yesterday. So they, for someone who said, I don't know if it was Illinois Jones or someone said they're not going to Jaden Daniels Pro Day. He, they're going to Jaden Daniels Pro Day. Ryan Paul said that. If it wasn't watching the interview yesterday, uh, he said he's not going to Drake May's Pro Day. All right. He said the quarterback coach, I think the OC are going to go, but. He's not going to Drake Mays, so that's it. Um, everyone else, guys, have a wonderful day. I love talking football with my guys. It's it's awesome. Um, get to do this. So do me a favor, have enjoy your day. All right. I always said, like I say on my show, do do yourself a favor. Send someone you haven't seen in a long time or talked to in a long time, one of your peoples. Send them a quick text to say, hey, what's up? Going, you know, just want to say hi. Make sure. I know we talk football, but you know we we still we all have lives. And do yourself a favor. I guarantee you, if you text someone you haven't talked to in a minute, it'll make their day. All right? So go make someone else smile today. All right? <laughs> Other than that, I'm out. Nomad? Hey, man. I appreciate everybody for joining the show, man. We had 100 and maybe 30-some people. Hopefully, that's reflected in the likes. And if there's anybody within the sound of my voice that has not subscribed to either the Nomad Network or the Sport or Sport Zone Chicago, we would greatly appreciate you for doing so, man. We would really love that support from you, man. And, and you know, it's this these whole conversations, man. We got we got uh, almost thirty days to to fill up, you know, these weeks with content, man. So that guys are uh, <laughs> go out and get no man for solid fellas socks. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he over here snickering about? That's what them super chats are for. <laughs> hey? yeah, give me solid oh, color socks, socks, man. Sock <laughs> money. Right, man. I just know that, man. But oh. uh, hey, once again, we appreciate you guys, man. If you consider uh, liking and subscribing to the channel, to each one of our channels, whether it be Nomad, the Nomad Network, or Sports Zone Chicago, we would greatly appreciate it. You guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat station, man. But before we get out of here, I'd like to leave you guys with these uh, famous words. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all. Peace, y'all. Hair down. This ain't work. Yay, yay. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>